Terraform Cloud has introduced projects. What does it mean for you? Let's find out. What's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. Today, we are going to be talking about a newly released feature in Terraform Cloud that is called Terraform Cloud Projects. And if you've watched my previous Terraform Cloud content, you know this is something I've wanted for a while. So we are going to cover what projects are, why I wanted them so badly. We'll get into the mechanics of how you create a new project and have a workspace associated with that project. And we'll also explore the permissions and various features inside of projects. Now I've broken things up into chapters. So if you don't care about the background, you can skip right to the next section. But I wanna dig first into why I wanted projects in the first place. The reason that I wanted something like projects in Terraform Cloud is because I come from a Microsoft background. And so I'm very used to the idea of dealing with hierarchies and using hierarchies to do two very important things. One is just organizing your stuff, whether that's a file system or active directory with its organizational units and moving users and groups around, or it could be for applying permissions. Again, you can do that in a file system by applying permissions to a parent folder that gets inherited by the child folder and the files inside of those folders. You can do the same thing in Active Directory. So that's what I'm used to from a management perspective, an operational perspective. And when I looked at Terraform Cloud, the one thing that jumped out to me pretty quickly was the fact that it was a flat hierarchy. There was the organization and then all the workspaces in the organization. And so if you wanted to set permissions for any of those workspaces, you had to do it on an individual basis, or you had to grant permissions at the organization level to all workspaces, which is usually gonna be, you know, too much permissions. What I wanted was some sort of container to organize my workspaces in, and then also apply permissions at the container level and have the workspaces inside that container inherit those permissions. And that's kind of what Projects does, though not in all the ways that I would expect it to. Now, the other reason that you want to do it beyond permissions is organization of resources. So if you are in a larger adopter of Terraform Cloud and you have 100 or 1,000 workspaces in your organization, that laundry list when you open up the UI is pretty overwhelming. Now, fortunately, at some point, they introduced tags that you could apply to your workspaces that allowed you to filter the view and narrow it down to the workspaces you cared about. But one, you had to remember what tags to apply, and two, it was suboptimal, I think. Being able to put things in projects allows you to narrow the view to only the workspaces that matter to you. And if you grant the appropriate level of access to your teams, they'll only see the projects and workspaces that matter to them. And that's nice as well. So it does help from a permissions perspective and it also helps from an organization perspective. So that's why I'm excited that projects exist. Why don't we dig into the implementation a little bit and see how it interacts uh, with the different workflows that exist in Terraform Cloud. Over here in the Terraform Cloud UI, you will notice that under the manage area, it no longer says workspaces, it says projects and workspaces. So they've updated the UI to reflect the projects. And now I have a projects column that will show me all workspaces if I have access to view all workspaces, as well as the individual projects that exist in my organization. Right now I have three, and we'll get to that default project workspace, default project in a moment. Now, how do I create a new project? Simply click on new and click on project, and then type in the name of the project. And this again is assuming that I have permissions to create a project in the organization. I'll click on create, and now I've created project number three. Now, if I wanna edit the properties of that project, I can hover over the project and click on the little pencil and notepad icon. That will take me to this screen where I can update the project name or grant different teams access to this project at one of two levels. We'll cover that in a moment as well. I can also choose to delete the project, but note that you can only delete empty projects. So if there are any existing workspaces in the project, you gotta delete those first. 
All right, let's go back to my projects view. How do I associate a workspace with a given project? Well, let's create a workspace and find out. I'll click on new and this time I'm going to create a workspace and I'm going to go with the CLI driven workflow because I don't have a VCS uh, repository set up. So I'll click on CLI. I'll type in a workspace name. So we'll call this workspace one. And it now gives me the option to assign a project and I can hit the drop down here and pick which project I want it assigned to. We'll do project one and create the workspace. Now that the workspace is created, if I go back to the default view, I can see that my workspace one is in project one and I can click on project one to view just that workspace. Now, how do I move a workspace if I want to delete this project? Well, that's as simple as hovering over workspace one, clicking the little breadcrumbs down here and selecting change project. And then I just tell it what project do I want to move it to? We'll move it to project two and now that workspace is in project two. So that's the experience in the UI of creating a project, creating a workspace in a given project and moving a workspace from one project to another. Now let's talk about the default project and why it exists. When HashiCorp decided to roll out the projects feature to all of their Terraform cloud customers, they had to decide what to do about existing workspaces. And what they decided is that all workspaces need to be in a project and all existing workspaces would be associated with the default project, which as you can see is named default project, capital D capital P with a space. And that is how it represents itself in the UI as well. You can rename the default project, but you cannot delete the default project because it needs somewhere to put workspaces that don't have a project associated with them. So that is why the default project exists. And we'll see another reason why it might exist in a moment, because there are several different workflows you can use to interact with Terraform Cloud. There's the CLI workflow, the VCS workflow, and the API workflow. Let's talk about the CLI workflow first. With the CLI workflow, you're still running your Terraform commands from the CLI and you're defining a backend for your state data, either using the backend remote block or the cloud block. Now the cloud block is the newer one and the preferred one, but let's head over to the code editor that I have set up. And I've got an example configuration here. I have both the backend block commented out because we're not using that one. And I also have a cloud block where you specify the organization and the workspace that is going to be used for the state data and the plan and apply runs from Terraform. Now you notice what's missing here is a project name. That's because right now, as of right now, the cloud block and the backend remote block have no concept of projects and that's not a valid argument you can put in here. You can't associate it with a particular project from the CLI workflow. Now, if I go ahead and pull up a command prompt here and run a Terraform in it, it will initialize my configuration and create this workspace because it didn't previously exist. Over in the UI, if we go and look in default project, there is now a workspace in here with this same name of the Terraform in it I just ran, project example remote backend. So because I could not specify a project, it placed the workspace in the default project, which, okay, that makes sense. Now, what happens if I move this workspace to another project? Is that gonna break my whole workflow? Well, let's see. I'll click on the bread breadcrumbs here and change the project. And I'll set this workspace to use project one and click on move. All right, this workspace is now in project one. Let's head back to the code editor and I'm gonna run a Terraform plan. Notice I didn't reinitialize it at all. So if it was gonna break, <laughs> it would break now, but it actually ends up running the Terraform plan just fine. Which leads me to believe that while the projects are a container of sorts for your workspaces, they're more of a metadata tag than anything else. This has the side impact that you still cannot have two workspaces with the same name in your Terraform Cloud organization even if they're associated with different projects, there's still a collision there in terms of naming. And I think this traces back to the CLI workflow. Now, what about the VCS workflow? 
Well, with that one, you create the workspace ahead of time and you'll associate it with a project there and then link it to whatever repository you're using in VCS. So there's no real impact there from the, re the uh, repository side. And when it comes to the API, I'm honestly not sure how they're handling it. So I'd recommend reading the API documentation. Now, if you recall, one of the big benefits of adding projects is dealing with permissions. So let's dig into the permissions model a little bit. What I'd like to do is explore the permissions for projects at three different levels. We have our organization level, we have our project level, and then the workspace level permissions. And we'll start at the top. We'll start at the organization level. So to take a look at that, I'm gonna go into my settings and go to teams. And I've created a few teams in this organization so we can view what organizational permissions are associated. Let's take a look at workspace admins. So here is the organization access. These are the organization level permissions you can assign. And there are two project specific permissions. One is view all projects and workspaces. And that does exactly what it implies. If you grant a team view all projects and workspaces, they'll have read only access to all projects and workspaces in your organization. The other one is manage all projects and workspaces, which is sort of God mode for all the projects and workspaces. So if you give a team member this access, they will be able to do just about anything when it comes to your workspaces and your projects. So definitely be careful with that one. Now there's two permissions that existed prior to projects that have some overlap. One is view workspaces only. This used to be just view workspaces, and this grants read-only access to workspaces, and it's not restricted by project. So if you grant someone view workspaces only, or if they already had this prior to the rollout of projects, they will now still be able to read all workspaces regardless of what project they're in. The other one is manage workspaces only, and this one's interesting. If someone had this before projects, they were able to manage everything about workspaces, their creation, their deletion, editing them, assigning permissions. Now they will still have that same level of access to all the workspaces regardless of what project they're in, with the caveat that they can only create new workspaces in the default project. So that's interesting. So if someone already has this permission and they cannot create a workspace in, the non, in a non-default project, you'll need to change their association to the manage all projects and workspaces permission if that's what you want to grant them. Now let's take a look at the permissions as they're applied to a given project. I'll go back out to my workspaces and projects and we'll select project one and go to edit it and we're gonna grant a team access so we can view the available permissions. So I'll add the team here, and there are two access levels, and they are currently not customizable, so you can't pick and choose permissions. It's all or nothing for each of these. The first one is read, and it does exactly what you would expect. It grants read access to the properties of the project and to all the workspaces that are contained within the project. So if you want to grant someone read access to all the workspaces in this project, Give them read access, you're good to go. The other one is admin. An admin might be more permissions than you might be looking to give to someone. They have all the permissions of read. They can also delete the project. Now again, all the workspaces have to be moved out of the project before they can be deleted. They can manage team access to the project and the workspaces inside of it. They can move workspaces but that begs the question, where can they move those workspaces to? And the answer is they have to have admin permissions on the destination work uh, project as well as the source project. So if I've granted Bob access to project one at the admin level and he wants to move a workspace to project two, he also needs admin level access on project two to move that workspace. So if someone's trying to evacuate the project, of workspaces to delete it, they'll need permissions to move those workspaces to another project. Aside from that, edit project and admin access for all the workspaces in the project, which means, you know, they basically have God mode on all workspaces that are in the project, as well as create new workspaces in this project. Now there's something missing here that you may have picked up on, and that is workspace level permissions. There are no workspace level permissions here aside from either read or admin. 
Now, if you know anything about workspaces, you'll know there's some other permissions levels in there. If we go back to our workspaces and let's go into this workspace here, we'll take a look at the settings and team access and we'll add a team and some permissions so we can see what those permissions are. We can, first of all, customize all permissions for the team so that I don't have to use one of the pre-canned permissions in here. And I have much more than read or admin. I also have a plan set of permissions and a write set of permissions. And you'll notice those are both missing at the project level. So I think that's one major gap that exists today is I cannot currently assign plan or write level permissions to all the workspaces in a project. I still have to do that on an individual workspace basis. So that's something I'd really like to see them improve. I hope you enjoyed this whirlwind tour of projects in Terraform Cloud. If I had a few suggestions for improvements, and I know that HashiCorp is actively looking to improve this implementation, the first one would be being able to assign workspace level permissions at the project level. I want my workspaces to inherit things like plan and write permissions and also be able to customize those permissions. Another thing that I'd really like to see that is not in the UI today is all the inherited permissions on a workspace that come from both the project and the organization level. I wanna get that full view of everyone who has access to that workspace in the UI, and you can't do that today. Another thing I'd really like to see is the addition of a project argument to the cloud block. I don't know what utility that would have, I just feel like it should be there. So those are my big three, but I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. So leave something in the comments or reach out to me on Twitter, it's Ned1313, and let me know how you're working with projects and if you're running into any issues. I have the HashiCorp product team ear for Terraform Cloud, so I can definitely forward that feedback and comments along. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. The cloud! Now, you may have noticed that the taco has made its way into the cloud. So congratulations to the taco for making it into the cloud. And a few people have asked if this is a real background. Yes. It's a real background. I didn't green screen it in or anything like that. All right. Bye.